Good morning, gang. Happy Saturday morning. So, finally, none of our regular work day, and we get to do our homestead work days. So, have fun doing everything there. I know I got a lot to do this weekend, so good deal. All right. So, what I want to talk about today is something that kind of comes into play, especially for our Latino and Latina subscribers here, but it's something that's important that all of us understand. Okay. Uh, our illustrious leader here, if you will, uh, potato in chief decided this today to come up and insult 60 million people. Okay. Now, I kind of reference back to the video I made the other day where I had the little incident, if you will, where a gentleman decided to call me racist, okay? And I get a kick out of it because the narrative that is out in the public right now, at least out of the media, at least out of the politicians, is the only racist people in this country are white conservatives, okay? Now... I'm not foolish enough to tell you that racism doesn't exist. It does. Okay. There are people in this country that are devout racists. Okay. They are a teeny tiny little minuscule portion of the, of the population. And they are white. They are black. They are Asian. They are Hispanic. There are of all sorts. It is not just white conservatives. Okay. Every ethnicity, if you will, uh, has their share of racist people. That's a fact. Okay. What I find interesting is the holier than thou attitude that comes out of the left that, that they're completely woke, you know, they're perfect. They're there. There's not, there's not a racist soul in the liberal, progressive, Democrat, whatever you want to call them, you know, communist, Marxist, I mean, like I said, business card, you know, pick something here. Okay. But their leader, the illustrious Potato Biden here, who has a habit of putting his foot in his mouth, had a big one this week, okay? The gaff machine that is Joe. You know, the guy who can't give a press conference because his, you know, his staff doesn't trust him whatsoever to say anything. Uh, you know, they've got to pre-screen questions from reporters and have pre pre-written answers for Potato Joe to read because they're afraid of what he might say. Now, with good reason, okay, because what we're finding here is... The ultimate in racism is coming out of the White House. And that shouldn't surprise anybody because you know, racism in the United States is nowhere near as bad as it was, say, in the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. Okay? But it's also nowhere near as good as it was prior to 2008. Okay? And if I need to remind everybody, prior to in 2008, we got the person who is wholly directly responsible for the race problems that we have in this country now, and that is Bozo Obama, the great divider in chief. Okay. For eight years, all Obama did was blame everything on racism. Okay. Now, you know, the part he keeps forgetting and the rest of us know is, you know, he was half black, black father, white mother. Okay. So I always wondered if he had this little battle going on in his head where the black side of him was against the white side of him or the white side of him was against the black side of him and he was racist in his own brain, okay? You know, because the spaghetti factory that was up there for him, you know, I, I mean, if the guy was if the guy was was talking, he was lying. So, you know, that was just what was going on with him. But we all know Joe isn't in charge. Okay. It can't be. I mean, like I've said many times, Joe can't figure out what, what flavor jello he wants for dinner. So we know that it, you know, his handlers, if you will, are Obama, 
you know, ironically, he bought a house just up the street from the White House, right? Uh, you know, Susan Rice and George Soros and the whole gang. And I know that sounds conspiracy theory crap and everything, but, you know, no, anybody can look at Joe and go, Joe is not the one running the country, okay? It's just not happening that way. Think about think about what we had with Trump. Trump was making decisions, okay? You know, uh, Joe's trying to figure out where his shoes are. But... So we have an issue where Joe comes up today, or, well, this week, and decided to insult 60 million Americans, okay? I'm going to play this clip for you here real quick, and then I'm kind of going to discuss it. But watch this for a second, and I'll be right back. There's a reason why it's been harder to get African Americans initially to get vaccinated. Because they used to be an experiment on the Tuskegee Airmen and others. People have memories. People have long memories. It's awful hard as well to get Latinx vaccinated as well. Why? They're worried that they'll be vaccinated and deported. Okay. So you got to see Joe's little guffaw again. Now, I will give him the part with talking about uh, African Americans and the Tuskegee Airmen and having you know experiments done on them. That's accurate. Okay, that's complete bullshit that our government ever did it. Okay, Joe might want to look in the history books and see which party did it, uh, but you know that would happen to be the one that. He's a member of. Go figure. Okay. You know, it's kind of like the old Planned Parenthood thing. It always, it, it just absolutely dumbfounds me that, you know, the Democrats support Planned Parenthood because, after all, the founder of Planned Parenthood, her objective by creating the company, if you will, was to eliminate the black population from the United States. Okay. That was, that was the stated mission of Planned Parenthood. And yet... The, Democrat, the, the Democrats are calling everybody else racist. Go figure. They're supporting a, com a, a company that's stated mission is to get rid of blacks. Okay, just putting that out there. But so Joe today, as you watch the video, with this quote of, it's awful hard as well to get Latinx, I love how he uses the woke term, vaccinated as well. Why? They're worried they'll be vaccinated and deported. Now think about that for a second. There are 60 million Latinos and Latinas in this country, okay? Two-thirds of them are native-born American citizens, okay? That would mean one-third of them are first-generation here. They are either, they're immigrants, okay? Which is fine. A majority of them came here legally, which is fine. They're you know, green card, American citizen, whatever it would be, but they're here legally. Yes, we all know that there are plenty of illegals. And I mean, it's somewhere, I think, around 10 or 12 million, okay? Nobody knows the accurate figure, but that's kind of what's put out there and what I got to go on. So this is the point. So he's saying these 10 or 12 million people, well, he's saying the whole 60 million, but I'm going to kind of back it down to the 10 or 12. And let, let's say that, Joe just put his foot in his mouth and he's just talking about the 10 or 12 that are here illegal and they're afraid of getting deported. Okay, sure, I'd be afraid of getting deported too if I was here illegal. You should be, because you're here illegally. Okay, but here's the thing, Joe. You have a come on in, we're open sign at the Texas border, at the New Mexico border, at the Arizona border, at the California border. You're handcuffing Border Patrol, telling them don't arrest people, catch and release, let them, let them, you know the illegals free in the country. Why the hell would they be worried about getting deported? You're welcome, welcoming them to come with open arms. They're not afraid of getting deported at all. What it is, Joe, is you committed to the World Economic Forum to have 70% of the population inoculated by... July 4th, and you're going to fail because guess what? The white population, the black population, the Asian population, 
and the Hispanic population are smarter than you are. Not that that's a big surprise, but people aren't willing to put this poison in their bodies, Joe. They're not afraid of getting deported. You've already said they're more than welcome to be here. Hell, you're flying kids into Chattanooga and, you know, giving families apartments, houses, food, phones, cars, you na- I mean, you name it, all right? You know, the easiest way to, you know, get ahead in the United States is to come here illegally because God knows the Democrats don't do anything to support American citizens. But hell, if, if you're an illegal, <laughs> shit, we got an open checkbook for you. Okay. So, you know, Joe, don't even try to give us this crap that they're worried about getting deported. They're not. It's just the public, the population knows that they're not, they're not willing to commit suicide. So, you know, Joe, I congratulate you on towing the line for deflection because, as usual, do what I, you know, the other side is doing what I'm doing. I'm just going to blame them until I get caught. Joe, you are a devout racist. That comment was exceptionally racist. And I will give you this, okay? This is from an attorney, all right? And a comment that an attorney made by the name of Matthew Culkin. He's an immigration attorney in Buffalo, New York, all right? His quote, this is racist as F. I won't say the word here. I'll keep it somewhat family friendly. Continuing. It presumes that if you have brown skin, you have necessarily violated U.S. immigration law. Do you get it, Joe? Even an immigration attorney is saying you're a racist. Please, Joe, do the world, do the country a favor. Resign today. Take Kamala with you. Take Nancy with you. Take Chuck with you. You're the leader of the Democrat Party. Please do everything. Do the entire world a favor and say, I am dissolving the Democrat Party effective immediately, and we are uh, abdicating every position in government we have in order to save the country. Because, Joe, you are destroying this country. You and your party are the worst thing that has happened to the United States ever. And I stand by that one. That's a fact. Have a good Saturday. Pinball out.